Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dyson Sphere Program. I'm Joe Mama, your host. So today I'd like to take on a question that's kind of been bugging me a little bit. Now, that is the production of deuterium using hydrogen. Now, we can, we can uh, artificially create deuterium using two methods. One is to use the fractionator. We get it kind of early on in the game, but the fractionator takes hydrogen in one side and then spits it out the other side. Now, it, for every 100 units of hydrogen that it takes in, it spits out one unit of deuterium. So basically, there's a 1% chance of getting deuterium uh, from hydrogen. But it uses about 700, and, oh, it doesn't say right now, it uses about 720 uh, kilowatts of power. Now, the other method is to use the particle collider. And let's go ahead and set the recipe right now. We're going to create deuterium. Now, right now, none of this has power, but this consumes about 12 megawatts. And it takes in five hydrogen to create one deuterium, if I'm remembering that correctly. Let's double check that really quickly. And uh, yeah, so, oh, I'm sorry, no, it takes in 10 hydrogen to create five deuterium. So basically, it's two, it's a two hydrogen to one deuterium conversion rate. So it consumes 10 hydrogen for every five that it creates. Now, on the other hand, the uh, fractionator consumes one hydrogen and turns it into one deuterium. <clears throat> so you get a better return on it. But on the other hand, it spits out 99 hydrogen. So then you got to do something with it. So the thing pretty commonly done, we take the hydrogen and then we loop it kind of like Covarex, um, Covarex enrichment from uh, Factorio. We just cycle it fractionator to fractionator and we create a loop and let the hydrogen run around this loop and then any deuterium that's created is spit down the middle and sent to a tank uh, for storage. So there's the question, which is the better way to do it? Now, I tend to think that particle collider is the way to go. It uses more power, but it takes up a heck of a lot less space and you're guaranteed a two for one return. I, and uh, I think that's pretty good compared to a 1% return. So what I've done is I've decided to, you know what, let's put it to the test. Let's do an experiment. And let us put together the same number of fractionators that consume the same amount of power as one particle collider. So divide 12 megawatts or 12,000 kilowatts by 720, you end up with 16.777 or 0.6667, which we're gonna go ahead and round down and make it 16 because that's a nice number. So basically 16 fractionators, which uses about 11 and a half megawatts it's pretty close between 11 and a half and tw to 12 megawatts it's really close but close enough that's what we'll go with so the other factor in the uh fractionators is the speed of the belts going through it now fractionators don't have a crafting time whereas the uh whereas the particle collider does the particle collider takes let's see if we look at the recipe it takes uh, five seconds, okay. In five seconds, it creates five deuterium, so one every second. That's pretty good. But if we take a look at these, there's no production time. In fact, uh, from what I've seen is the, the uh, amount of deuterium these produce is based on the number of hydrogen units that they can parse through. And the faster you pump them through, the faster they can parse them. So my thought is that the speed of the belts makes a difference. So I've set up three, uh, three arrangements here, and each this the first arrangement right here uses a Mark One belt. The second arrangement uses Mark Two. The third arrangement uses Mark Three. Faster belts, obviously. So you can kind of my frame rate kind of sucks right now, but you can see it looks like it's running backward. But in fact, that's a Mark Three belt, and it's going stupid fast. And then I've used Mark Two belts to pull the deuterium into uh, into a collector. And I've used Mark III, for, in the case of the uh, particle collider, I've used Mark III sorters to uh, process the ore in and out. And I've got a nice collection of hydrogen here for each, for each thing. And I've left a little bit of a buffer in the, uh, in the high, actually I left a lot of a buffer in the uh, loop here because 
we one thing we don't want we don't want the hydrogen to bind up okay we don't want the hydrogen to fill the belt and then stop up so we're just going to allow this it's it's almost like a like water hammer in a house the hydrogen will not jam up as long as we've got an air gap in the uh, in the top of the tank there so and then this one here it doesn't matter there just needs to be a nice collection and i've got about 8,000 hydrogen units and here's what we're going to do we're going to conduct a five minute test and i'll drop a tesla tower right here at the uh to start the experiment now once it starts we're going to let it go for 300 seconds once we get to 300 seconds, we're going to check these tanks and see how many units are in it. Of course, we'll remove the pole to stop the process. But uh, So I think that pretty much explains it. I think we'll go ahead and uh, we'll give it a start. The hydrogen is right at the door of each facility ready to go. So I think we're going to go ahead and kick that off. So let's go get the pole. And we can time it. It's probably going to be a jump cut, or not a jump cut, but a uh, time lapse. But if we look in the lower right hand corner, we see the time elapsed in the game. And we're at 49 seconds, 50 seconds. At zero seconds, we're going to go ahead and drop this pole. And then that means that'll be 31 minutes, 86 hours, <laughs> 31 minutes. And then at 36 minutes, we'll pull up the pole. And 59, boom. 31 seconds, there we go. So let's. Let it do its thing. Okay, we got about five seconds left, so we're going to go ahead at, th at, thir at the 36 minute mark, and done. We'll kill that. So now we've killed power, but we're going to allow all belts to clean up and bring their deuterium back to the tank. And do we have any deuterium remaining? It looks like it has all made it to the tank. All right, so let's do the final count. Clearly, we can see this is less. How many? Okay, we've got 253 units of deuterium on the Mark I belts after five minutes. All right. The next one, 493. Okay, so we've got about 500. So I'd like, I kind of like to take a guess here. So tw if that's 12, and then the Mark III is 30, so that means this should be about two and a half. So that means 500 to two and a half would be, gosh, could it be about 1250? Yeah, 1200. Wow, awesome. Okay, so there we go. Clearly, the Mark III belt produces faster, uh, 1200 exactly. And now let's see what our, uh, what our particle collider did. 295, less than 300, damn. So the Mark III belt arrangement, this loop, which uses the same amount of power as this particle collider, the Mark III belt did four times the production in the same amount of time with the same amount of power. With, mind you, well, it used, it used I don't know, what would you say, maybe six times the space? What, that looks about, let's see, two, this is about that big, so, I don't know, one, two, three, four, about eight. So, okay, so it uses eight times the space, but the arrangement produced four times the production. That's pretty good. That is very awesome. So there you have it. Final numbers, once again, after five minutes, the Mark I loop arrangement of fractionators did 250. So the, uh, the particle collider did beat that out. Okay, and then the Mark II belt did 493 which exceeded the particle collider. So the Mark II belts 
megawatt for megawatt will beat out the particle collider. So the Mark III belt did 1200 deuterium production in five minutes. And again, in five minutes, the particle collider did 295. So there you go. So there it is, it's official. I would say that's pretty damn official. Video evidence that the fractionators when used with a high-speed belt, Mark II or Mark III, will outperform the same amount of power's worth of particle collider. So there you go. Awesome. Well, all right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this little experiment. I know I did. It's pretty educational. And uh, I, I plan on using this arrangement in the future then. Well, you all have a wonderful day. Hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Ciao.